Hey everybody, this is ODT Gaming doing a contrast paint review. There's been a lot of hype going on here the last few um, weeks, really, with the, the revolutionary uh, paint system that came out, and it is something interesting. Uh, so I went out to my local games workshop, uh, picked up four of the new contrast paints out of the possible 34 colors that they have, quite a bit to choose from. And really, the average painter like myself, who this review is really meant for, um, needs to get out there and look online and see what those contrast paints are, uh, how they look, and consider what they want to get to uh, kind of entertain themselves with the new paint style and how they're going to incorporate it into their current paint system. Because really... Um, Games Workshop is discontinuing a lot from their paint line, airbrushes, technical paints, and these, these are replacing them. So we really need to consider what that means in the long run. Uh, we've got a contrast paint system that has a high ink or dense ink uh, suspended, and it's suspension. That's why you have to shake them, because you get a little bit uh, pool in at the bottom. And then also some type of wash system with a, a medium in it. So it's doing two things at one time. It is uh, settling into the recesses of your miniature, which we'll show here in a few seconds, but then also providing some type of shade, uh, shading, even if it's like a light shading, to the upper areas of the miniature. So the whole goal is to really cut down on your paint time. And it, it does achieve that to some degree. So I would like to show what I did. This is a current miniature that I have been working on with my young son. And the wings were already painted white. Uh, the gold was already painted with a retributor gold. So my examples are going to be somewhat what you should be doing. Uh, because according to Games Workshop, we should be base coating our miniatures with their gray primer and uh, then top coating from above, above the miniature, way up here, uh, the white. And that would achieve uh, directional lighting uh, from the two sources of differing primer. So again, we use a ceramite white to cover this miniature since I don't have white primer. I primarily uh, paint with black primer. And I did two coats on this wing. I'll kind of move it side to side here you can see there's there is some light pooling here uh, especially in these deep recesses and that is sort of a light grayish maybe with a hint of blue to it um, I, I did like this but I felt like I needed to go a step further with my white so what I did is a dry brush took my handy dandy dry brush and kind of went at an angle here on the other wing and you can see that there is a lot more of a, a white ness to the very top ridges of that wing. And I'm just kind of bending it back and forth there so you can see it. The second test I did was to the gold. I wanted to see how the flesh and the leather, my favorite browns, really affected the gold. So you can see on this breastplate here, this is painted with two coats of the Gilliman flesh. And on the other opposite breastplate, it is coated with the snake bite leather. This plate here, the right shoulder plate, is just retributor gold with a Devlin mud wash. Uh, obviously that that shade you can kind of see the pooling here up in this corner here. But what does the contrast do versus that? Well uh, it's obviously darker. You can see there is this dark pooling here at the bottom which is okay and it's understandable to have that when you just let it dry uh, and into this top area here. Um, what I sort of liked about this is that on the uh, gold, it did two things. It uh, pulled in the recesses, and it almost looks tabletop ready with just that one coat on it. So I would say that if you are trying to do metallics with contrast paints, that it would be successful over Retributor Gold or your Steels or, uh, you know, Iron Breaker, uh, or any type of chain mail or silver. The third test that I did was with the Athermatic Blue. I again went with my white base coat with the ceramic white and then I did two coats of the blue contrast paint with this cloth right in here. And I would say that this turned out well, however, 
in order to sort of finish this off, I would go back and do edge highlighting with some type of white on these top areas. It just, it doesn't look like it coated it. It did enough of a coat in one or two coats to really make it look crisp. Um, the lines aren't crisp, the tops look like it has kind of rubbed off just a tad, uh, and you can see the base paint too much. Um, so that color, obviously, uh, I'm not sounding like I, I like too much, but kind of is what it is. I think some of these colors are going to have great coat covering, um, and other ones you're going to have to do a little bit of layering to. Now, the next uh, examples I want to point out are these straps right in here. I went over those straps with ceramite white again, so I'd have my white base coat, and then I went over them with a contrast leather. You can see that right there. There we go, get into focus. Um, and if you look very closely right in here, there we go, it actually coated very well. You've got a deep brown, uh, you cannot see any white at all, and the top layers of those straps right in there are are crisp. You've got a, a definitely a two-tone effect. So I would give that leather an A or even maybe an A+. Plus. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm hyping this stuff up. I, I just think that there is good success with some of these colors. Uh, the other comparison I wanted to do for uh, any type of gamer that already had a painted army was over a painted miniature already. This skull, which is from the Blades of Corn set, um, I ended up painting just the other day before the contrast paints came out. So you can see sort of the white paint lines. I've got a, I probably should have gap filled that a little bit better. Um, but what I had done with this is I used the Gilliman flesh in the recesses of each of these horns. That's why they look a little bit more brown and opaque than the rest of these lines up in here. Uh, just to kind of prove that you could paint over top those areas uh, and have a good effect on a non-sealed uh, miniature. On the blood here, I went over this right uh, column of blood with black or the Nuln Oil, and then this side with, or I'm sorry, this side was the contrast uh, flesh, and then this side was a Nuln Oil. Not too much of a difference there, but obviously when you're painting uh, with your corn blood technical paint, it's, it's going to be a different mixture. So... But I, I would say that you could use these uh, covering or these contrast paints with other paints that you have that you've already uh, painted, such as other miniatures, or I would even say and go as far as mixing them with other acrylic sets. Uh, we won't mention those, but if you have paints from various sets, you probably could put those with them. So all in all, I would give GW a, you know, B plus, A minus with these types of uh, flush, well, of, of the contrast paints. Um, is it something that is going to, you know, replace everything that you have on your shelf? No, I think this is going to be incorporated with the average gamer. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of technique with this that you need to learn, as, such as making sure that your brush is like completely dipped into the um, contrast paint, that it is not dripping, but that it is full of paint all the way around. You want to make sure that you get an even covering with the paint. Um, do not put it on lightly. It will dry within about three to four minutes. Um, just make sure that the entire area that you want to cover is covered. Uh, that is my review, and I hope you enjoyed it and it helped you out. I will invest in more colors and show more examples in the future, but as of now, those were the ones that I picked up, and good night and good luck.